Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to explain you about the discovery of protons and discovery of neutrons. Now, I have already up uploaded a video about the discovery of electrons, whose link you can find in the description section. Before I start the lesson, let me remind you to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon. Because when you hit the bell icon, then only you will get the notification of my latest uploads. Let us start our lesson. Already we have learnt about J.J. Thompson's cathode ray experiment and the discovery of electrons. Now the problem is, as all of us, we know that atom is electrically neutral. Now J.J. Thompson says, atom contain negatively charged particles. Then the question arises, how can an atom be electrically neutral? So it was assumed that an atom must contain some positively charged particles because of which the negatively charged particle electron, the effect of electron can be cancelled and the total charge of atoms become zero. It was in 1886. Goldstein discovered a positive rays along with the cathode rays in the cathode ray tube experiment. He made some modification in the cathode ray tube experiment. Instead of a solid cathode, he took a perforated cathode. Now he observed a ray of particles moving in the opposite direction as that of the cathode rays and they were passing through the pores of the cathodes and causing fluorescence on the wall of the discharge tube at the cathode end. He named it as the canal rays as they were passing, these rays were passing through the pores of the cathode, he called it canal rays. These rays are also known as the positive rays or the anode rays. Now let us discuss about the properties of anode rays or positive rays. Anode ray travels in a straight line. It emerges from the anode and moves towards the cathode. Anode rays are generally consist of positively charged particles. When we place an electric field, then it is deflected towards the negative plate and uh, away from the positive plate. That means it is positively charged. It contains positively charged particles. These rays produce fluorescence on a zinc sulfide screen. This shows that these rays consist of some particles or materials. The charge to mass ratio of anode rays particle are different for different gases. when That means when we take different gases in the discharge tube, then you can find the particles present in that anode rays, the charge and mass will be different. When we take hydrogen gas, then the mass of the particles obtained in the anode rays will be the minimum. And when we take other gases, the mass will be just a multiple of the particles obtained when we use hydrogen gas. The particle obtained when we take hydrogen gas in the discharge tube is known as a proton. Now let us discuss the properties of protons. Proton is a positively charged particle. Proton is a positively charged particle and all atoms they contain this positively charged particle and that is why it is a fundamental particle of atom. As far as its charge is concerned, it carries a unit positive charge whose value is 1.609 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. The mass of a proton is equal to the mass of a, a hydrogen atom and it is 1837 times heavier than 
an electron that means it is a massive particle as compared to electron electron is quite lighter than a proton which mass we can consider as its negative. mass numerically or the absolute value of its mass is 1.637 into 10 to the power minus 24 as we have already learned that proton is a massive particle and the mass of electron is negligible as compared to the mass of the proton so we can say mass of an atom is equal to sum total of the mass of protons it contains but experimentally it has been seen that mass of a proton mass of an atom is quite larger than the sum total of mass of protons present in it for example helium atom helium atom contains two protons so the mass of one helium atom must be equal to two amu or two atomic mass unit now experimentally it has been seen that mass of a helium atom is equal to nearly equal to four amu what does it suggest it suggests that there must be some other type of particles and that is why it was proposed that there must be present another kind of particles in an atom whose mass should be equal to the mass of proton and it should be electrically neutral. In the year 1932, James Chadwick discovered this third kind of particles. When he bombarded alpha particle into a nucleus like beryllium. And these particles which was discovered by James Chadwick was known as neutrons. So neutrons, when we see neutrons, neutrons are having specific property. First property, neutron is electrically neutral. It has no charge. It does not carry any charge. And the second part, uh, second property is its mass. Its mass is slightly higher than the mass of proton. Numerically, we can say it is equal to 1.676 into 10 to the power minus 24 am sorry 24 gram so neutrons are neutral it is not deflected by any electric field or magnetic field and its mass is approximately equal to mass of proton so thank you children thank for watching my video if you find this video helpful for you please like comment and share We'll meet once again with another such important video related to uh, an important topic in science. Till then, have a nice time.